What's up, everyone? I'm Chris Rogers from Rockin' Waves 11294, and you're watching WGS TV. Welcome to another installment of WGS TV right here on YouTube.com slash WrestleGamer and YouTube.com slash Zephex Fame. I'm Double B Billy Bujo, and before I get to my raw review for this week, if you guys are probably wondering, you know, where's Double B at? You know, normally we see him up in the corner talking about, you know, something with wrestling related. Well, because of a slight technical snafu with a certain webcam and a certain video editor on my computer, I'm unable to manually record my reviews. So, for the time being, I'm going to have to guess, be like the other commentators on YouTube and just go ahead and give you guys voice only while you guys get to watch uh, the gameplays from now on. But um, I hope that, you know, you guys still find it interesting enough, you know, that that the gameplay, the gameplay uh, not only grabs you, but not only that, but the commentary that I talk about is good enough to keep you here on WGS TV and Zephyx thing. So, I hope you guys can just bear with me for the time being. I, I don't know, you know, this could be a good thing or a bad thing. You can never tell. You can never tell which way, uh, you know... This could be a good thing for me because you never know. You never know because a lot of people like to hear the commentary and watch the gameplay. So, let's go ahead and we're going to give it a try for this time, for the time being, okay? And now that I've gotten that out of the way, let's go ahead and do the Monday Night Raw review for the week of July 2nd, 2012. We open up the show with John Cena coming out to react to what happened last week with him in the big show. And then he gets interrupted by Daniel Bryan, who then gets interrupted by CM Punk, who then gets interrupted by Crush Jericho. Apparently, there was like it was catchphrase night on Monday Night Raw, and you know it was a battle of catchphrases. And I I I'll tell you what, I, it was really good to uh, hear Jericho welcome everyone to Raw is Jericho. I thought that was quite awesome. And, um, and basically, we would never, ever be the same again. And I thought that was just totally, totally awesome. I, at, at that point, I'm like, okay, Y2J is back. And I don't give a crap that Jericho is heel now. You know, even if Jericho is heel, he's still pretty epic, epically awesome. And for him to bring out his old catchphrases in an effort to, I guess you would say, teach Daniel Bryan about catchphrases was just incredibly awesome. Then Kane com comes out, and then Big Show comes out and starts beating the crap out of everybody. Basically, a big build for Money in the Bank. Not only for the ladder match, but for the WWE Championship and for the main event. So, I'm going to go 5 out of 5. I thought it was an epic opening for Monday Night Raw. I thought it was wonderful um, hearing those old catchphrases from, catchphrases, excuse me, from uh, Chris Jericho. And I thought it was quite entertaining. Quite entertaining. Great way to start out Monday Night Raw, in my opinion. Next up, we're going to go to an 8-man tag match. We're going to have the United States Champion, Santino Morello. The Intercontinental Champion, Kofi Kings. I'm sorry, Christian. T and teaming up with R-Truth. Yeah, the returning R-Truth, R-Truth is back, and Kofi Kingston, the tag team champions, to take on the primetime players, David Otunga and Cody Rhodes. Um, very interesting eight-man tag. Um, a lot of unique uh, storylines involved in this one, including the primetime players and uh, AW with all world promotions. Uh, and at one point in the match, they decided that you know, it wasn't going their way, and they were going to walk out, and then David Otunga walks out on Cody Rhodes, leaving Cody Rhodes all by his lonesome to get beaten down. Therefore, your winners, Santino, Christian, R-Truth, and Kofi Kingston. Um, I thought it was a decent eight-man tag match for once. You don't see too many of those in the WWE. I mean, the last one they had was at, a, I believe, at last year's WrestleMania, WrestleMania 27, which was just a total utter crap. You know, it was an eight-man tag that should have never happened. You know, maybe an eight... 
they could possibly put it on the pre-show, but they decided to put it on the, the actual pay-per-view, and then it was just utter garbage. But uh, this eight-man tag was a little bit better than that, so I'm going to go 3.5 out of 5, you know. I thought, like I said, it, it was an okay match. Next up, uh, we have a, a Bert of Del Rio who was set to meet a, an opponent of Teddy Long's choosing, since Teddy Long was the interim general manager. And he also did make the announcement that uh, coming at up at Money in the Bank, that Sheamus would have to defend his title against a Bertel Del Rio, but Sheamus, uh, I'm sorry, a Bertel Del Rio would have to be in the in in the ring against uh, an opponent of his choosing, and it turns out to be Sin Cara. And before the match could even get underway, a Bertel Del Rio just utterly beats the crap out of Sin Cara. I mean, even cuts him off in his entrance. So basically we were promised a match and all we got was a beatdown in the mex it, it, this was close to the the border you know in texas and uh from what i was told that uh Alberto del rio was called the mexican word for let's just say what vince mcmahon used to be called in the attitude era and for those of you who who follow my drift on that uh, i'm gonna go uh, 3.5 out of 5. I was really hoping to see a, uh, a match with Alberto Del Rio and Sin Cara, not just a beatdown. But I could kind of stand, you know, I can understand why they would want to, they would want to build the uh, the way they want to do with Alberto Del Rio. So next up, it was Paul Heyman's turn uh, to kind of respond in a sense to uh, what uh, Triple H's challenge and whatnot. And uh, what what happened? And he makes the announcement that coming up July 23rd at the 1,000th uh, edition of Monday Night Raw, that Brock Lesnar will be in attendance to answer Triple H's challenge himself. So looking forward to see, hearing what uh, the way that's going to go. And uh, Heyman at the end just starts laughing. Yeah. Oh well. That's all we can do. That's all we can say about that. Next up, we had a, uh, a mixed tag match. Sheamus and AJ taking on Dolph Ziggler and Vicky Guerrero. Uh, all I can say is AJ and her ring gear. Hotness! Great. It was great to see that. Great to... Uh, yeah, it was just great to see that. That's all I'm going to say. Um, I, I thought it was uh, a unique tag match. Um to kind of try to combine two different storylines, I guess you would think. So, I'm going to go 4 out of 5 just because I got to see... I would give a 4.5 out of 5, but, you know... As equally hot as AJ is in her ring gear, Vicky Guerrero in her ring gear... Ugh. Ugh. That's all I can say is, wow. And some people actually think she's hot. Are they blind? Do they not see? Well, well, you know what? I don't. I'm not going to be rude. I am not going to be rude on this video, so I do apologize. But uh, Vicky Guerrero, ugh, that's all I'm going to say. Then it was Heath Slater's turn to once again get his butt whooped. We thought by a WWE legend, and out comes Doink the Clown. And for the, um, I hate to spoil it for everybody. But it was Steve Lombardi. It was Brooklyn Brawler in the Dunk the Clown makeup. And for those of you who are utterly shocked that it wasn't Maverick, Matt Bourne, get a clue. Get a clue. Maverick, Matt Bourne wasn't going to be back in the WWE for one sh one night only to uh, help promote the uh, 1000th episode of Monday Night Raw. I think Maverick, Matt Bourne is done with the WWE in all senses of the word. So they had to have somebody come out dressed as Dunk the Clown, and lo and behold, they got Steve Lombardi to do that. And that's a shame, too, because you know, it, it, it's kind of a, a play on the words, but Steve Lombardi is like a legendary jobber in the WWE. You know, I dare anybody, without Googling it, without Googling it right now, for those of you who are watching this video, if you can name... At least three matches in Steve Lombardi, a.k.a. the Brooklyn Ball Brawler's career, where he's actually won the match without going to Google, without looking it up on the Internet. Because I can tell you this right now, it's few and far between when uh, Steve Lombardi actually went over on a match. But, you know, 
for for the uh, for, for what it's worth, for what it's worth, uh, Steve Lombardi could make anybody can put anyone over like nobody else can. He can make you just look. You know, you can be a crap wrestler. You know, you can be Kizarni. I'm I'm sorry to use that kind of a a, a reference there, but you know, Kizarni was a, a terrible letdown for the WWE. And Steve Lombardi can take him and make him look like a wrestling genius. That's how good Steve Lombardi is at his job. That's why I call him a legendary jobber. So, but Heath Slater gets the win. But what really sells the segment, what really gets everyone's attention, is the fact that next, you know, we hear bang, yo, it's me, it's me. It's DDP, and out comes Diamond Dallas Page to do one thing and one thing only, and nobody else can do it better. I'm sorry, Ashley, but screw Johnny Ace. It's the Diamond Cutter, and screw Randy Orton with the RKO. Nobody else, nobody else can do the Diamond Cutter better than Diamond Dallas Page, and nobody else can sell it better than Diamond Dallas Page. And... For what it's worth, he looked in really good shape, and uh, that's another thing, a video I'm, I'm planning on, you know, a commentary now, I can't say video, I'll just call it a commentary now since my video camera is out of whack, is, uh, you know, guys who have been totally misused in the WWE, and there are quite a few of them who have been, who have been uh, successful in WCW, and they were incredibly misused by the WWE but that'll be a, an, another video I know I got a lot of planned videos that I actually need to do you know if I wasn't so behind on my reviews I could probably get to them but um, anyway let's get back to this review um, as far as uh, Heath Slater, Dunk the Clown, DDP segment um, great it was great seeing all these guys actually good seeing Steve Lombardi actually in the ring doing something instead of being backstage so I'm gonna go four out of five and uh, you know, if I only had the video camera up, you know, on here, guys, I'll be giving you guys the diamond cutter signal. But so just think in your hearts that right now you can see me doing the diamond cutter signal right there on your video screen. Oh, well. Next up, we have the no disqualification match between Big Show and Kane. When or whatever these two titans get together, you got to wonder, is the, the actual ring itself structurally uh, reinforced? To hold all this weight. Guys, if you think about it. Think about this uh, big show. 445 pounds. Kane. He's about a biscuit over 300 pounds. That's about 745 pounds. In one ring. It has to be structurally reinforced. You know, we don't want a, a repeat of what happened with Brock Lesnar and Big Show around 2003, 2004. When they had the superplex that just imploded the ring. But it, it didn't come to that. But uh, as far as this match goes, um, interesting match. Very, very interesting uh, outcome. So Big Show gets the win over Kane. A great match. Um, again, a lot of people don't put a lot of stock into the super heavyweight wrestlers, the big men wrestlers. But uh, I kind of do. I kind of do. I kind of see where, the, where it goes with them. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a 4 out of 5. Next up, we had a Money in the Bank qualifier. A Money in the Bank qualifier. Uh, it was Tyson Kidd taking on Tensai. No, 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 no. I take that back. It was just a regular match. Um, I'm looking back on my notes here, and I misread my notes. I do apologize about that. I need to learn to take my notes better. But um, anyway, it was a one-on-one -on -one match. Between Tyson Kidd and Tensai, I guess it's a Money in the Bank builder. And from the way it looks, you know, you would think Tyson Kidd and Tensai, you know, Prince Albert version 2. You, you kind of figured that Prince Albert version 2 would be the, uh, the one that gets over. Not so. Just two minutes into the match, Tensai hits the turnbuckle and then gets rolled up by Tyson Kidd and gets the three count. Tyson Kidd goes over on Tensai. And... I'm sitting here is thinking, okay, they brought a lot of people saying they brought Jericho back to, to only have him lose to CM Punk. What in the freaking hell are they doing with Tensai? 
you know, did they think, you know, he was epic in Japan, and I'm not going to deny that. He was epic in Japan. But he, he's kind of having the Kazarni effect, is Tensai, this gimmick. And it's kind of showing, you know, if you put Tensai, if you put, I'm sorry, Tyson Kidd over in Tensai. No, this is not discrediting Tyson Kidd's abilities as a performer, as an in-ring wrestler. No, I'm not discrediting that. But when you, you take into the account, you know, the history that Tensai, a.k.a. Prince Albert version 2, a.k.a. A-Train, a.k.a. just Giant Bernard, a.k.a. just give him what signal identity, please, has had in the WWE. You figured, you know, he would go over. But this is kind of, you know, upset of the night. Upset of the night, you know. Just as, you know, on, on the previous Friday Night SmackDown, when Tyson Kidd upset Jack Swagger, he's now upset Tensai. So I'm guess he's kind of getting that. Uh, maybe now he's we can we can call him the upset kid. You know when when you think that Tyson Kid won't go over on someone like Tensai or Jack Swagger, boom! That's when WWE shows you that hey, we're gonna put him over. We're gonna shock the crowd, and that's what they did. That's what they did with Tyson Kid. But they they did have a a, a following uh, segment backstage where. Tens oh by the way, uh, Sakimoto did get the crap beat out of him again because of his loss. And next thing you know, uh, we go to backstage where uh, Tyson Kidd was conducting an interview with Josh Matthews, and Tensai beats the crap out of him. Could this be WWE's way of trying to take Tyson Kidd out of the match? So who knows? Who knows? Main event time, we have a tag match between John Cena and CM Punk, Daniel Bryan, and Chris Jericho. Um, you want to talk about ending your show in a lot of controversy. Uh, let me just say this, um, to kind of build to what happens. Um, earlier in the show, there was a, uh, a segment backstage after the AJ's match, you know, the mixed tag match, where she goes up to CM Punk, and CM Punk was on the telephone with his sister, and uh, AJ asked him if, you know, he saw her match, and CM Punk said no. He was on the phone with his sister, and AJ was, you know, quite upset about it. Then we see uh, we're going to go to this match here. Uh, John, Chris Jericho and John Cena are in the back. You know, they they chased each other to the back, or uh, Cena chased Jericho to the back. So we're left with Jericho, I'm sorry, with uh, CM Punk and Daniel Bryan. Out comes AJ. Uh, CM Punk and Daniel Bryan are still going at it. And uh, AJ is skipping around. Now, normally that's a distraction for either Punk or Bryan, but it didn't happen this time. Both guys were just, you know, they were focused on each other. So AJ gets a little mad, and she goes around the ring. She... Pulls out a table. Now, from the way it looks, she had a, a very upset look on her face. And she started climbing it. And, you know, we were getting the, the I guess you would say, the feeling that AJ was going to jump through the table herself. You know, try to hurt herself in order to gain attention. From CM Punk and Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan is the first one who notices it. And then CM Punk comes running up. And they're on the, uh, the middle turnbuckle. Daniel Bryan is in front of the table. Trying to block. You know, trying to you know, uh, be a, a barrier of sorts. Between him and the table. So AJ doesn't hurt herself. And next thing you know. While on the middle rope. AJ smiles. Plants one. Right on CM Punk. You know the old tonsil hockey routine. And then shoves CM Punk into Daniel Bryan, and they both go through the table. And we end the show with AJ going, yes, yes, yes. I made mention of this on my SmackDown review, the character development for AJ. And they're doing a, a marvelous job because, you know, I see a lot of potential in where this story can go. And which way this direction of the story is going to be going. And I guess maybe we'll find out how it's going to cultivate at uh, Money in the Bank. As far as this match goes, 
I'm going to go 4.5 out of 5. Uh, shocking ending. Uh, you know, you always got to love those controversial endings. And, you know, AJ has just progressed so much as a character in the WWE. And her in-ring performance is actually improving a lot as well. You know, courtesy of that Shining Wizard, she used to uh, t uh, take out Vicky Guerrero. And uh, Vicky Guerrero, man, she can take a bump, can't she? But, uh... Um, anyway, overall score for this week's Monday Night Raw is going to get a 4.5 out of 5. Uh, a very good edition of Monday Night Raw. A lot of great builds into Money in the Bank. Um, you know, especially with, uh, of course, the Money in the Bank ladder match. You know, John Cena, Chris Jericho, Kane, and the Big Show. Um, also getting the announcement that at the 1,000th episode of Monday Night Raw, Lesnar is going to be there to answer Triple H's challenge himself. Um, good to see Doink the Clown, a.k.a. Steve Lombardi, uh, actually in the ring doing something. And, of course, Diamond Dallas Page. You know, if, if they brought him back, I'd like to know who they're going to bring, bring back next week to uh, kick his Slater's butt. Um, I hope they keep doing the, the, what they're doing with Tyson Kidd. You know, doing, you know, doing the upsets, you know, kind of overcoming the odds. I just hope they don't turn him into the next John Cena. So... That's all I got to say about that. And uh, I'm very interested to see where they go with AJ, CM Punk, and Daniel Bryan. Now, of course, for those, those of you who watched Super SmackDown like I did, you know, we, we kind of saw which way they were going to go, but I'm going to be talking about that on my next review here on WGS TV and ZFX Fame. So what I want to know is what do you guys, the viewers and subscribers, of both WGS TV and ZFX Fame, your thoughts on Monday Night Raw this week. Put your comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and favorite this video. And if you guys have any comments, you know, do you, do you find that it's better for me to do my reviews like this rather than appear on video? I'm, I'm willing. I am very open to suggestions on that as well. You know, I want to hear your feedback on, you know, the way I've done this review. So, uh, don't forget to subscribe to both YouTube.com slash WrestleGamer and YouTube.com slash ZephxFame. That's Z-E-P-H-I-X Fame. So, with that being said, I'm Double B. Willie Boudreau saying thank you very much for watching.